Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at Windsor & Newton's set of 24 professional artists watercolors. And here is the set here. Um, I purchased it on Amazon for $87. I think it retails for around $212, somewhere like that. Not a cheap paint. It is a professional um, type of paint. So we're going to take a look at it and see how it compares to other artists' quality brands. I did a couple little paintings with them already. These two eyeballs. And there is a tutorial on my YouTube channel for the eyeball if you want to. Uh, it's for real time. If you want to paint along, it's it's easier than you think. So I encourage you to if you're interested in portraiture and skin tone mixing and all of that jazz. Um, so the first thing I did with my paint was I swatched it out. And here it is, swatched out on student grade paper. I use student grade paper for my swatches um, just because I just need to see the colors and how they behave. I don't, I, I paint a lot. I don't need to see it on the expensive stuff. And then I actually stuck the little pan wrappers right on to my page here so that I would just have that information and color number if I needed to reorder something and I wasn't sure. And then I made a tiny swatch to go inside my tin, uh, laid out exactly the way my paints are. So while I'm painting, if I'm not sure what a color is, I can refer to my chart. Because sometimes when you're, especially artist watercolors, because they're so transparent and concentrated, when they're dry, you can't really tell what the color is sometimes. You might say, well, I can tell it's a blue, but I don't know if it's um, a greenish blue or a purple purpley blue or you know I'm not exactly sure what shade so that helps me right there and I wrote the pigment numbers um, on my um, on my chart here as well that I copied over from the pan labels uh, the great thing about the set is most of them were single pigment colors the not so great thing about this set is that I found a lot of the earth tones to be kind of weak and streaky which I would not um, find acceptable in an artist's line of paint um, they're actually very similar to the Cotman which is their student line of paint um, uh, earth tones but what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do a couple washes and then we're going to look at my big swatch of artists um, watercolors my big swatch book and we're going to compare this with other very similarly priced brands just so you kind of get a feel for it um, I actually filmed this this uh, tutorial before but or this review before but I felt like I was being a little harsh on Windsor Newton because because they're so expensive I guess I had a higher bar in mind um, and so I thought I might not have been exactly fair so I'm re-recording it so the first thing I want to do is just kind of test do a couple washes I'm going to do um, I think I'll just do just a regular flat wash now I did know I, I like this palette a lot I have a lot of water in my mix here um, but I found that the the um, the palette did not beat up very much and after I was done, um, I'm just going to tip this up a little bit. After I was done doing my uh, doing my eyeball painting, like the, the paints just dried out on my palette very well and didn't beat up and I could re-wet them easily because I don't, I clean my palette after I'm done a painting. You can see it lays down really nice without the addition of any sort of mediums. Now we can try flow, test the flow here. I'm just going to wet an area. We'll do a few colors here just so we can see. So let's do French Ultramarine because it's a very granular color. Sometimes it can be kind of heavy and not want to flow. And I did not pre-spray my palette. I'm going straight on the dry paint. Yeah, I think the flow is fine. That's going to flow less than a like a, a uh, more dye-based pigment. Well, let's go with um, Permanent Rose. Look at that. That's some really nice flow to it. Really exciting. Look where they mix. Those are pretty. Those colors look pretty mixed together. And uh, ultramarine is such a beautiful granulating color that it just does some fun. Put some crimson in there. It just does some fun things. So uh, flow is good. Transparency is good. Um, they're delightful to work for work with. But let's put them to the test next to some other paints. I'm not going to put a ton of time into this because um, they are a good paint. I think most people are are pretty aware of Windsor & Newton professional watercolors. I'm just going to grab my swatch book right here. And we'll take a look here. First, let's look against um, Cotman, which is their which is their own student line of paints, which I recommend for people beginning. Um, I really like it because they're easy to find most everywhere in the world, and you don't get that with every line of paint. Some things are difficult to find, and I know it's a tried and true brand. So let's look at the colors compared to Cotman. The color intensity is actually pretty similar, but you will notice that with the professional paints, you don't need to, you can just kind of wipe a, da a damp brush across your paint and grab the paint really easily. So it takes a little more work to get the uh, Cotman out, but vibrancy wise, I find the Cotmans to be be quite vibrant. Um, they do, they are, they don't flow quite as well. They do seem to have a little bit of like a, um, I don't want to say slimy, almost like kind of gelatinous or streaky feel sometimes. Um, 
when you're when you're working with them like it takes a little more work to get all that pigment up that you want to use but all in all you know i'm i'm a pretty big fan of the cotman for beginners they're not quite as transparent but they're not bad they're really not um as far as the earth tones i have the same issue with the cotman earth tones as i do the professional earth tones they're a little weak um and i also find the earth tones in sennelier to be a little a little weak and in yarka to be a little weak so i don't know what it is about their formulations or earth tones i don't care for them personally as much as other brands but that's you know that's personal preference that's me um these are my m grams they're probably my favorite now the reason I wanted to compare this to some other brands is because we all live in different parts of the world. Sometimes you're going to find paints that are way cheaper where you live and you're going to find paints that are way more expensive. So I don't want you to say, I got to buy M grams because that's what Lindsay likes the best. And she says it's the best, but they're 10 times more expensive where I live. Well, that's ridiculous. Get the Windsor Newton it's, if it's cheaper. They're comparable. Um, I do find, you know, they're, these do seem to be quite near the brightness of the M grams. The M grams have richer uh, neutrals. M grams have extremely vivid colors. But, you know, dioxazine violet, we can see right there, the same exact pigment. Well, I'm just going to scooch that over. You know, pretty tough to tell the difference. Very, very comparable. Ultramarine there. You know, I mean, I actually like the ones are Newton Prussian blue over the uh, over the M. Graham from these two swatches. Just looking at those swatches, even though they're the same pigment. So, um, so very, very comparable. That is the, uh, this is Holbein which I'm not actually a big fan of this particular kit that I have, although I think Holbein makes good paint. This kit, I had a lot of mixes and I wasn't pleased with that. So um, so I don't, don't care for that. That is the Turner, which is a much less expensive brand of paint. Um, a little bit less pigmented, I would say, but definitely not a bad value. I mean... It's, it's pretty close. Not quite as pigmented, but pretty close. Those are Mission Gold. Mission Gold are extremely vivid. They're known for their vividness and their transparency. And a few years ago, they had a bad reputation of uh, having some light fast issues, but they have resolved that. And they're using the tried and true pigments that you know and love now. And, um, and they're definitely worth a look. And they do seem to be the kind of steal of a deal right now. Uh, if you're shopping on Amazon and I love their perfect pan set. In fact, their perfect pan set of 24, I probably pick over this one just because I think the colors are a lot more concentrated. Daniel Smith is a American made wonderful paint company. And there's the six, these are the mixes from the six color set essential set that I have that I made really quickly. So you can see a huge variety for with very little color because they're so clean and transparent. Um, but then again, comparable, comparable, you know, um, I guess I almost expected my my world to be rocked a little bit more by the Windsor & Newton because they've always been the most expensive paints, it seems like. But now there's so much more on the market that you can really be choosy and and look around and find the, the paint that is available to you that will meet your budget. These are cores. I really like the core paints. I find them to be extremely vivid and beautiful. Um, I have no qualms with their Aquazol binder, and um, I highly recommend them. Now, something Windsor & Newton likes to say is that they don't recommend you using their tube paints to refill, to put in your palette and dry out. Um, I will say their pans re-wet easier than dried out tube paints, but these are all dried out Windsor & Newton tube colors there, and uh, they re-wet just fine. So I don't have the exact same colors. I have, well, I have Aurelian in both. Um, you know, and the Aurelian pan right there did is definitely a bit more vivid than the Aurelian right there. So that pro that did rewet better. But the yellow ochre, I mean, there's the yellow ochre. This is the yellow ochre from trying not to bump my microphone from my pan. Um, so not a. I'm just gonna move my microphone here. Uh, so not a not a huge deal. I think if you want to use a tube and refill your pans, no, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I mean, they will say not to, but. I think they're just trying to sell you more paint, quite frankly. Those are <clears throat> mem memory blue. I'm probably not saying that right. I apologize. I don't have many colors of those, so I don't know if it's a very fair comparison. But they seem to be nice and uh, and pigmented and definitely comparable. Those are some. Those were pencil swatches. Uh, da Vinci. These are my pick for teachers because huge tubes, very economical, very high quality. Um, I like those for that. Those are student grade. That's a, a small set of Windsor Newton that I had in pans that I really enjoyed. Ganzai Tambay is a different different ball of worms. Uh, Lucas 1862 that I just purchased. Um, I would say the Windsor Newtons are a little bit more luminous and transparent. Um, these are a lot cheaper. So, I mean, for the, about the same price, I paid for 24 of these. I got 48 of these. Um, I think, again, the differences are fairly small, but I do find these have a little bit more gloss and luminance. I'm more kind of like the Sennelier's versus the Lucas, which have a little bit more of a matte. Not chalky, but definitely a matte um, finish. Those are also Lucas. 
white knights. I actually found the, this is so funny because side by side, I actually find the Yarkas to be the most comparable to the Windsor and Newton's professional and Yarkas are so much less money. So, and you know, look at the pigments, look at what you're getting. And, um, you know, cause obviously you want light, fast colors. You want to make sure the, the pigments that they're using are light, fast, but I found color intensity and color application to be very similar with the St. Petersburg paints. Um, and yeah, that, those are liquid watercolors, so not really the same thing. Those are students. And then last, I think the last, I have Sennelli and Schminka to go. So those are the Schminka. Very similar. Very similar in application. The Schminkas um, do have a little bit of a different granulation to some of the colors, but I don't have a huge selection, so I don't know if it's really fair for me to comment on how comparable they are. That's a brand called Kusakabe, which is a Japanese brand. Very similar, but some of their pigments are a little iffy. So um, those are the Neo watercolors by Kusakabe. They do use some good pigments and some iffy ones. So I don't really know what to what to say. I probably wouldn't recommend them. Um, these are Sennelier and these are the Artist Sennelier, which are, which are lovely, but their student Sennelier's are actually pretty darn good too. Um, but yeah, they definitely hold their own against other artist watercolors, but there are other artist watercolors that are just as good for a lot less money. So I guess bottom line, that's what I wanted to put out there. Yes. Um, if you get a good deal on them, go for it. But I think the day of Windsor Newton being the only game in town is done. They definitely have some competition. They're great paints, but, um, but they're not the only game in town. So if you get a great deal, I say go for it, but there's no need, no need for you to pay twice as much for this paint over Sennelier, M. Graham, Daniel Smith, um, Yarka, or any of the other uh, good quality brands out there. That's just my opinion. If you want to share yours, do it in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.